What's up guys? Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay guys, so for today's video, as you can tell by the title, I'll be telling you guys all about my basic training experience, Air Force BMT experience 2021. I did go into basic training March the 3rd. This is my second attempt trying to film this video because the first one, the first time I did it, it was just like all over the place and just like very much scattered and just not organized. Well, this time I organized everything on my phone. Yeah, if you guys see my hands, it's from basic. I have not been able to recover my um, moisturized hands since leaving from basic. So how about we not come for me for that? Um. First thing we're gonna talk about is zero week and when I first got there. So when I first got there, first of all, the bus drive there was not decent. They got us there, but like the lady, she did not care. Like she was driving all sorts and types of crazy, like going super duper fast on these bumps. Bobbing and weaving and bobbing and weaving. She did not care. Let me tell you this right now. Whenever you are driving with someone in basic, they don't care how they drive. Like, when you have to go to appointments that you can't walk through for some reason, they can't drive. That's all you need to know. So when we first pulled up to the gates, I was just like, oh my God. So then we went to our squadron and at the squadron, we went on the, I think it's the back side or I don't know which side it is, but it's where the stadium is where you're gonna be graduating. And I'm sorry if you guys hear a lot of noise. People are doing the most. This is a very busy neighborhood for some reason. It's the suburbs, but it's the very, it's super duper busy. Everybody's always doing something and it's Monday for no reason um anyways they dropped us off right there and i saw mtr for the first time as we were getting there my heart just dropped because you know when you see that little top hat that they do that top that had that they be rocking um it's just something about it i don't know what it is it's just very intimidating so when we pulled up nobody was like screaming like harshly to get off the bus but they were just like let's go let's go let's go let's go so it was more like that and so we got off the bus and they directed us in a line or whatever to put our stuff down and then go grab a book a backpack and hold it unzip all the zippers and they instructed everything it was like it, they were yelling i'm not gonna cap um unzipped all the zippers and we had to walk over to some um i think there were airmen that just got out of basic or airmen that were in med hole waiting to go to um go to tech school or something they were very nice as they were putting the shampoo notebooks and all the extra stuff in our backpacks they were very nice on the shower shoes they were like, after the first and second week, it'll be fine. Everything gets easier. Basic training gets better. It's not as bad as it thinks. Da, 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 da. And then, you know, the same little thing that everybody says, days go by slow, but the weeks go by fast, which is very, very true. You'll you'll get it when you are in. That's very, very true. Um, Yeah, so we got our stuff and then they walked us underneath the atrium and that's when we met our MTI. But I didn't know it was my MTI the first time meeting him. I thought it was just some random person and he was telling me, asking me which dorm I was in. I didn't really know what he was talking about. It was a lot of separation and all that other stuff. Let's skip all that. Holding my bag was the hardest thing for some reason. I had, um, you guys saw from the pack list, I just had a carry-on. I guess I packed too much stuff in. I think it's mainly because they told us to hold it in our left hand. And I'm not left-handed, I'm right-handed. My right hand is my dominant hand, like, no. I was holding all my stuff in my left hand and I put on the backpack. And I also had on the ECWW jacket that they had us on. Yeah, they had us on a lot of, they, yeah. I started crying because I couldn't carry my carry on with my left hand, it got heavier for some reason. Nobody cared, honestly, nobody cared. I didn't like start, ooh, ooh, ooh. I was just like, tears coming down my eyes and I was just like trying to push through it. Like, oh my God, this is terrible. Um, we ate an MRE and then we went upstairs to our, our dorm or whatever. We were on the third floor, so it wasn't that bad, but like at the moment I was just like, please let me sit this double back down i can't like i just cannot when we got up to the dorm um we met three other girls and they were all just like trying to put their beds together and stuff and just like talking to each other he was just like okay so they'll tell you what to do i'll be right back because he had to go get some other girls and he came back in and he was saying that the only reason he's being nice tonight is because he's tired but tomorrow we better expect him to be on us or whatever and i was like oh lord here we go and that night he assigned child runners as well. I was just so glad it wasn't me. The entire time I was at basic, I was not a child runner. Thank God. But yeah, we were all just trying to figure out how we wanted to set our areas up before he lets us know how to do it. And they didn't let us know how to do all that stuff until like, I think the end of week zero or first week of training. Yeah, that was the first night. I don't think we showered. I don't remember showering. We might've, but I don't remember. Just know that I was up for a total of 24 hours because in Atlanta, I was up since 3 a.m. And I didn't go to sleep that night at basic till 3 a.m. I think. Cause we kept getting girls left and right, left and right. And we were up to like, just expect the first night, expect to be up 
unless you're the last person that's gonna be there. Expect to be up the whole entire night. And you can't sit on your bed, you have to sit in the chair next to your locker, your wall locker. <sighs> but it was a chill night, I guess. But I was very mad because we had to stay up and we couldn't really sleep. But you know, you would get some sleep time in. Somebody will let you know if MTI is coming or whatever. So let me just get into showering first before I get into week zero. The showering was not that bad as I thought it would be. I was kind of nervous, of course, being naked in front of 40 some odd women. Um, but I didn't really care at this point. Just showering in general, I stopped caring because like I'm trying to get clean. I've been doing, I'm busy left and right doing this, that, and third. I'm just worried about a warm shower because most of the time it's not warm. Or if you do get the good temperature, it's gonna be extremely hot. So you, it's really 50-50 and some of like a few of them didn't work, but it didn't matter. Also, I was in Disneyland. I think I'm gonna prefer Disneyland over Alcatraz. So I wrote down everything and it says zero week consisted of vaccines, P tests, lots of information being thrown at you. So like just know you're gonna be getting packed with, with a lot of information. They're just gonna get you prepared for what you need to know as far as the basics of basic training. Like you'll get your memory work and you have to read it whenever you not you're not doing anything. So if y'all are not marching, you need to pull out your memory work and just start reading or just glazing over it, but you still need to know it because they're gonna come up to you and start asking you questions about it. And you're gonna be super confused. You're gonna be super confused because you're gonna one probably forget your reporting statement, and you're gonna two not know the answer. So that kind of happened to me, but I knew my reporting statement. So let's just let's just not even get to that. You know, you're gonna be extremely homesick. Um, by the end of week zero, you're gonna be begging to talk to your parents or go home. Um, you do get a quick phone call where you tell them your address. I think you do it like two days later. And then by the end of the week, I think you get your first phone call or you might get it in the first week. You get it first week of training, actually. Oh, also, after the first night when we woke up, we had a different MTI. Um, we still had our other one, but they just, they like all alternate between shifts. But he was banging on the door like a monster. I was super duper duper scared. Like, I didn't know what that was. First of all, when you wake up, it's like, dun, 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 dun. so you're already getting up. And then next thing you know, you hear, boom, 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 boom. boom. Is there a beast at the door? Is there a giant at the door? No, the door sounds so loud. Just like to skip ahead, when I would do EC shifts and they would just bang it on the door in general, my uh, MTI would scare us and like, boom! And it would actually shake the little peephole thing, like make it fly open. And it feels like, it's, it feels and sounds like a bomb just went off at the front door. And it's just like, it's super duper scary, but we just had to quickly get up. Somebody had to take one for the team and go open the door. I don't remember who it was, but they opened the door for him and yeah. Um, but yeah, zero week, you're gonna learn how to march because you're just gonna be walking everywhere and it's gonna look weird. So you're gonna learn how to march and stand at attention because you're gonna be going to different appointments left and right for your, for your immunizations and everything that they need to get done. I had two and a half MTIs in total for zero week i had two mtis they were both male one of them left by week one to go and leave for two weeks and then he came back and he had a whole different flight so we thought he's gonna come back to our flight but he didn't it doesn't even matter because after him we had a really really good mti i love sergeant he is the best mti known to man period all right so let's talk about child time um child time was my favorite time but at first i hated it because when you go in there <sighs> it's just so much like oh my god first of all it was so much yelling because people were doing stuff wrong because it was their first time they didn't understand what was going on the certain like trainees didn't know what to do we were just like doing what we just assumed would be good but i've watched a lot of videos so i was just like i kind of know what i need to do so you go through the line it's kind of like a buffet and they say what do you want and you say that you don't have to do your reporting statement so you'll do that the first couple times but you don't have to do it so you'll just say what you need to get, you'll slide down, you'll say what you need to get, slide down, and you just keep going, grab what you want to grab, and grab whatever you want, to be honest. Don't be intimidated, even though like I was, you're gonna be intimidated the first zero week. I didn't start grabbing random stuff until the second week of training, so. Um, you're gonna go to your seat, and it's like, you're gonna have to figure that out. They're gonna teach you how to do that, but I don't I don't know how to describe it to you guys, so you'll have to learn it there. Well, no, 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 you put your tray down, you would stand at attention for five seconds, I think, and then, you would dismiss yourself. You have to dismiss yourself, I, apparently. I, I never dismissed myself, I just sat down, but you have to dismiss yourself. And then you sit down, as soon as you sit down, you take your mask off. They will yell at you just for sitting down with your mask on for a long period of time, not before you eat. But just go ahead and immediately take it off. 
put it in your pocket and start eating but do not get up without your mask on yes you can go back and get seconds but i don't even know how people have time to do that the most time we usually get to eat is like seven minutes maybe five um sometimes our mtis ran us through the line and ran us rushed us through child time so we literally sometimes get five minutes or maybe three minutes to eat you got to be really quick if you have a busy day going so yeah i would pack a lot of stuff on my plate like i'm talking a lot of food the food at the chow hall is pretty good to me it was pretty good to me some days don't get me wrong but I would pack so much stuff on my plate and get so many cups of peanut butter. Let me tell you, peanut butter is top tier. Peanut butter is everything when you're in BMT. Like even now, I put being peanut butter on a lot of stuff because I've adapted to that that habit. It's not good, but it's helped me gain a lot of weight that I need. So yeah, and also the first thing when I started getting there, when I started reaching for different stuff and realizing certain stuff was there, I was like, oh, I didn't even have that. I didn't even know they had that for certain days. But once I started getting comfortable, I got the, I tried the yogurt and peanut butter thing. It was so good. Strawberry banana, yogurt, and peanut butter. Dip the peanut butter in your with your spoon. Dip it in the yogurt. Chef's kiss. Along with excessive eating and the amount of time that you have to eat, you are going to not be able to poop for a couple days, maybe the first two weeks. You're not gonna be able to poop properly because you're gonna be just under so much stress and just gonna be so much adjusting. You're not even gonna, sometimes you're not even gonna think to poop, but your stomach's gonna start hurting and you're just gonna know that you need to do it, but it's gonna start coming out in pebbles because you're under so much stress. So it's gonna be a difficult couple of first weeks, but you'll get used to it. Now, another thing that I hated, well, that was an adjustment for me in week zero was the excessive standing. You have to get used to standing around. Um, make sure you have the most comfortable shoes. I would say memory foam, something with a really good memory foam cushion because you're, you're gonna be standing for a very long periods of time just because just because just because they feel like it um you're always gonna be waiting on your mti's for certain stuff because they're always gonna go into summary place and start chatting it up like you're not outside standing at attention or at parade rest but you're you're in pain your feet are killing you yeah make sure you have some really comfortable shoes because i hated the standing and texas has horrible wind like i didn't know that y'all get so much wind like i would we would just be under the atrium just standing and it's be and it's gonna be like gushes of wind every flying in different directions and you still have to like stand at attention like or do something you can't cross your legs so it's just like you can't be comfortable the wind made it so cold i came in march but i was so cold like uh-uh we got our pt clothes i think two days after being there and some days they would just decide we're gonna wear shorts today we're gonna wear our um t-shirt no ma'am let me show you guys my pt clothes. i still have them all right so this is the pt jacket and then these are the pt shorts they come with some pants, PT pants or whatever, but I gave those to my sister. And then this is my PT shirt as well. And you're gonna put laundry marks on everything so that when they wash clothes, you'll have your stuff and they'll know whose it is. All right, now let's talk about the wingman policy. This was an adjustment for me because I am such an independent person. I hate having to rely on someone to be there with me, but it makes sense because so much stuff has happened in the past with the military. You're gonna have to have a wingman when you go to see your MTI and there's no other trainee there. Um, but yeah, wingman policy. If somebody needs a wingman, you have to either, it doesn't matter, they have to choose or you choose. You just say, okay, I'll be your wingman. And you have to go with them to their appointments and this, that, and the third, like, uh. And it can be anybody. It's not just, you don't have an assigned wingman. You just, it's at random, whoever, whenever, however, you know. All right, so when I got my first phone call, let me tell you, your girl was crying. Your girl was bawling her eyes out. I was bawling my eyes out. Like, no, I'm not even gonna reenact. Just know you're gonna cry. At first, I was like, I'm not even gonna miss anybody. I'm here to just, you know, start a better life. I'm, that's gonna be my motivation. I don't need nothing else. I'm gonna miss my family, but it's not gonna be like, I'm not gonna be crying because I'm gonna see them soon. No, you're gonna cry because you're gonna be so isolated. You're not even gonna have your phone. And I'm so used to having my phone. And when they took it away, I was just like, because I'm used to pulling up Google when I have questions for stuff. And I was so confused. The majority of the time me being there, I couldn't look anything up. So you're gonna be asking everybody different questions. But when you get that first phone call, you're gonna cry. You are going to cry. It was not cute. Every phone call I would have, I would turn my chair facing towards the side of my wall locker where it was just a wall. And I would just get on my phone call like that. Everybody was facing towards the center aisle and everything. And I would just like, no, let me look at this wall while I'm on this phone call. <laughs> All right, and Sundays, let's get into Sundays. 
I absolutely love Sundays. You would get so much freedom. Your first Sunday that you get, you're not gonna have that much freedom because your MTI is still gonna be there. But after that, you won't have an MTI there. For your flight, you won't. It's just gonna be the dorm chief and the element leaders watching over everybody or like, you know, making sure everybody's doing what they need to do. So they're gonna have tasks to do. And I'm gonna get into the jobs like that in a second. But Sundays are the best. I took that time to do my hair and I loved going to the services and everything. You can wash your hair and everything, but you have to do it in the shower time. You get like an hour shower. So, and it's no PT. No PT. Zero week as well, you don't have PT because you're in ROM or like you're just trying to make sure nobody has COVID. So you're not gonna be going out and doing everything. You know, you're not gonna be as active as you would after second week or during second week of training. You would go to your service, you would still do chow, and there was like one MTI in chow hall during Sundays just to keep the order of things. But you still wanna be acting straight. You don't wanna be acting up because if you act up, there's gonna be some MTI around and they're gonna tell your MTI and then everybody just gets in trouble and it's not a fun thing. All right, let's talk about bed drills. I, I absolutely hated them. We only had to do it once because we pretty much got ourselves together, but I just still hated them. So bed drills are when your MTI teaches you how to do your bed and then he tells you to go to your go to your bed and try to make it. Once you make it and he sees it, you gotta take it down from sheet to sheet, everything and strip your bed and then you have to redo it in eight minutes or less. And so everybody's just flying around doing everything because you have to do it a certain way too. The hospital corners is what really slows you down. Once you do the eight minutes, if somebody wasn't didn't do it, like if somebody didn't finish, you gotta take it down and then redo it again and back and forth back and forth one girl twisted her ankle while doing this and i had to wind up being her wee man so she just left um i hated that actually but i was kind of glad at the same time because she stopped us from continuing to do this you know he he went overboard he was doing the very much the most and um yeah so getting asked questions by your mti with your memory work um, this is how it goes. We lined up for, to get ready to go to chow and we we're at parade rest and he was just coming around like and he came up to me and I don't even know how to describe it. He came up to me and he was like, who's your team chief? And I was like, Sir Attorney Harper reports his order. I don't know. Are you dumb? <laughs> He's like, you don't know. It's funny because it's me. And I was like. Thank you. I I am so sorry. I didn't know. I I was just lost for words. And I was like, yes, sir. And then he stared at me for like three seconds. And then he went away and asked somebody else. So be prepared to get asked questions by your MTIs, no matter how intimidating you have to answer. Also, I don't know if I mentioned, but they can't yell in your face. Like they can't yell in your face like some of the commercials look. And they can't cuss at you. So expect to hear a lot of what the piss and um holy piss hurry the piss up um those are so funny they literally crack me up every time i hear it like that that no that's just so funny to me because no when you hear it you're just gonna die and it is, it's gonna be hard to hold in your laughter because it's so funny when they say it now we're gonna talk about female mtis um <laughs> luckily i had all male mtis thank god because a female MTIs can come in at any time and you wouldn't even have to announce them coming in. With a guy you have to, with, with a male, you have to say gentlemen enter in the dormitory so everybody would know when you're coming out and when you're leaving. And they can't come in while everybody's sleeping but female MTIs can. So I, I just thank God that, you know, I was blessed enough to have all male MTIs. Female MTIs, they are nothing to play with. They are a lot more meaner in my opinion than male MTIs. They're just, yeah, they're scary. Just. Be aware of that, but your MTIs are your friends, right? All right, and the last thing for week zero that I have is adjusting to your reporting statement. I kind of had an issue with that, but not like to a crazy degree. I kind of got the hang of it, but I was like not even trying to talk to my MTIs like that because I was still adjusting to their demeanor. They're gonna be mean, just to know that everybody's gonna be mean to you at BMT. No one's gonna be nice except for the girls in your dorm, your flight, hopefully, you know? I got blessed to have a sweet flight. Everybody was pretty much nice to each other and helping each other out. Um, try your hardest to actually study your reporting statement because it's gonna suck once you don't get your reporting statement down past by second week of training or first week of training because they're gonna start punishing the flight for you not 
getting it together. But it is funny when they say, Sir Trendy what? Because you forgot your recording statement. It's funny to hear that. Kevin is somebody else, not you. All right, first week of training, getting used to everybody being mean. Like I said, everybody's mean to you. No one's nice at all. Not even civilians there, even though they're supposed to be nice. You know, they're not supposed to be hammering down on you like that. Civilians being like the people in the chow hall that are serving you the food, they're not supposed to be mean. Um, some of them are just because they don't they don't know what else i don't know they have a horrible day or something. yeah you'll figure it out you'll figure it out when you get there all right and then another thing that happened in the first week of training i got the peanut butter shot um everybody in my flight got the peanut butter shot and then i also that same day i think i got two extra shots still more immunizations and everything peanut butter shot penicillin shot it was not that bad actually like it wasn't as bad as i thought it was but it was okay it wasn't horrible so we all turned around because we couldn't see everybody's getting their shot because you have to pull your pants down and then when they call your name you're like oh lord so you have to go back and get your shot and they gave me the shot right here here i think right there so it's like kind of on your butt kind of not but i was okay at first when they put it in and injected it even though it did feel like peanut butter being injected into my body but when you reach down to pull up your pants it's a whole new ball game you're in pain you just got shot but if you don't baby it you'll be fine if you walk out there fine after your shot you're gonna be good but if you walk out and you like limping and doing the most that shot ain't gonna heal for a minute miss girl um <laughs> couple girls were limping halfway through basic it was very um funny to watch but it's like some people handle pain differently so you gotta just give them the benefit of the doubt all right now let's get into the jobs that you will have in basic um i forgot what these are called i keep calling them tasks but it's like where you clean the dorm and everything i forgot what they were called um i was on laundry crew let's see you have laundry crew latrine crew utility crew shoe aligner bed aligner hallway crew stairway crew day room crew and ec monitors so um if i could recommend a job for you to get i would definitely say hallway crew or stairway crew they have it the easiest to me they never failed any i don't remember them failing any because everybody's gonna be walking by and everything so they'll kind of glaze over certain stuff but your mti is going to be super duper particular about every little thing the smallest piece of lint something being, being there that shouldn't be there they call those unauthorized items so the craziest thing happened well, i was like this is the craziest thing ever he opened the dryer and he looked around felt around no does he felt no does he saw so he pulls out a pen from his pocket and he puts the pen in the little dryer thingy whatever lifts it up he's like this is an unauthorized item this this area is failed so yeah i was very much upset i was like okay so i have to really try my hardest and be super duper ocd about these dryers about these dryers about the bins everything in the area yeah um laundry crew is pretty hard especially when you have to do linen exchange i hated doing linen exchange this was always after pt and i'm just like i'm tired i'm not trying to be doing the most and rushing to bring sheets and stuff down and having to go get them and no 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 do not do laundry crew do not do latrine um, shoe aligner is also a good job to do and bed aligner is also a decent job to do so anything but latrine a room crew because they had it hard and utility crew anything but that you're good i wouldn't want to do ec monitor because no ec no let's just get into ec in general as soon as we got tasked with doing ec duty that's how my stress level rise. Again, every week is gonna be more responsibility. Every week is gonna be more crazy stuff, just unnecessary stuff. So EC duty is when you are watching the door of the dorm or whatever, watch over the dorms, make sure all the girls are there, make sure they're all accounted for, and whoever's leaving, you have to keep track of that as well, whoever left, whoever came back. And when someone enters the, the, the dorm, you have to say, gentlemen entering the dormitory. If you're guys, you get a lady entering the dormitory or leaving the dormitory. Anyways, it's just, it was very stressful because your MTI is right there. Okay, so this is this is the front door right here. And this is me being on EC duty. And this is your MTI, your flight office. So they'll be in there. And sometimes they'll ask you questions while you're in there. And so you're just always on guard. And you're just always, you know, shook it. So I hated doing EC duty during the day. And I hated doing that. And I hated it in general. Because it was very much unnecessary. Who's going to be on the base? Huh? That we have to protect? What are we going to do with our little guns? that don't even have ammo in it. What are we gonna do? So yeah, EC duty was unexplainable. Um, you would be asleep from get, getting whatever kind of sleep that you can get. And you'll be woken up all kinds of time of night wherever you're scheduled for your EC duty. Mine's is usually 2 a.m. 
or like eight o'clock to it's always a two hour shift and it rotates between whatever it's just a lot to explain you will wake up and at 2 a.m in the morning or whatever somebody tapping you saying hey you have ec duty <laughs> No, 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 ma'am. Um, I hated that with the fire burning passion. All right, first week of training, I also got my 341 pulled um, <laughs> for forgetting my water bottle. Um, the hydration schedule is something you have to follow at basic. It's very important because you can pass out. And so my water bottle is right over there. You see it right there, yay. You're gonna have your name on the bottom or whatever so you don't ever lose it, lose it, lose it. But I left it in the dorms and I came up to get it and my T.I. saw me coming back with my wingman. He was just like, where are you going? I was like, I forgot my, search training Harvard reports so or I forgot my water bottle. Well, I forgot my water bottle. And he was like, <sighs> and he turned around and he walked upstairs and he was like, when we get back, give me your 341. Like on the inside, I was happy. Like I was extremely happy because I've been seeing people talk about this on YouTube and I was just like, oh my God, this is kind of iconic. But then it was just like, really? For forgetting my water bottle. You also gotta have to adjust to marching everywhere and there's always gonna be MTIs watching you march with your wingman. You have to march a certain way. If you're not marching a certain way, they're gonna call you out for it and try to fix you on it because you're gonna grow to just accept them and be okay with them because they're there to build you into a good airman they're just an overall good person in general they're gonna make sure you're not slacking in any areas yeah i just grew to like my empty guys they're gonna correct you every step of the way so be aware of that right studying time you're gonna get your your bmtsg you're gonna be studying in this big book every single time um you're in the dorms not doing nothing they say, when they say it's time for self-study you're gonna be studying that bntsg and trust me it's not fun it's not any fun because you have girls in there that are not trying to study sometimes and there's gonna be yappa yappa yap like just talking 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 40 some girls just talking and talking talking non-stop and I can't, I couldn't take it. Like I was going crazy in BMT. Like I promise you I was. I was losing brain cells. We're trying to focus. <laughs> Everybody's just talking and some, they're telling you to be quiet. And some people be quiet, but people just keep talking and talking and talking and the volume just gets so loud and then your MTI is yelling at you, but then they quiet down and then they get right back up. It's just like. Yeah, I got, you can't do it. I can't. Stressful. So many different girls, guys. I, no. I don't like being around a bunch of girls. It's just too much for me. Too much personality, just so much stuff. And it's just like, I know, man. Um, all right, now we're gonna talk about airman's time. And this is the time where you have your MTIs and the reporting statements are gone. So you don't have to say reporting statements, but you still, it'd be cool to say yes, sir, you know, still, yes, ma'am, whatever. You're just gonna talk about certain stuff that goes around in BMT, stuff to be aware of. So like being under peer pressure and stuff and everything like that, stuff like that, you just talk to him or her about anything and everything really sometimes it gets off topic we got off topic a lot all right second week of training more responsibility of course we got out of rom this week we had um our covid test i think we took like two covid tests in in total and then we got out of rom because we were pretty much all negative <sighs> that means we were able to go and um go to the mini mall and get stuff that we needed okay and then we had pt that week now since we got out of rom we can do pt now <sighs> I absolutely hated PT because it was just so much. I mean, the first PT we had, I liked it because it was not crazy stuff, you know? You know, a couple days passed by, we started doing PT and I hate it. Strength days are the worst because you're doing pyramid sit-ups and pyramid push-ups and that's just, no. That is a killer for me and I hate doing frog jumps and frog jacks. Gonna do that a lot, I hate it. My camera's about to die, give me one second. So you're getting out of room, you're doing PT. You're doing PT in all kinds of weather. Let me tell you about this one time, bro. Like it was raining, like drizzling outside and the wind was going crazy. I told y'all Texas wind is crazy. And this morning, that wind was going dumb. That wind was going stupid. Like, and it was freezing cold wind. We only had our PT jackets on and our PT pants. No gloves, I'm thinking, yeah, no gloves. I literally started crying. I was crying a lot there, basic, just know that. Um, but we were doing the side to side lunges or whatever and I just had tears coming down my eyes. My MT, I saw me and he didn't care. They don't care, I'm trying to tell you. They do not care when you are struggling. They want you to push past all that. So it was the worst. No, it was horrible, y'all. I thought I was gonna get sick, but I didn't get sick at all. So I was very confused, you know, cause when you're cold and it starts raining, you're outside. 
something's supposed to go on with your body and you're supposed to get sick that's what usually happens but that didn't happen um yeah so let's talk about um the, some of the girls in my flight they also were starting to worry about brother flight or like other male flights and which is honestly not that serious it really wasn't that serious no one's really checking for everybody like everybody's just here for one thing i mean if you see them doing something or trying to get your attention honestly you're just gonna not even pay attention to them that's that that's that was my thing like i didn't even care they were not cute none of the boys at bmt were cute i promise you they were not not at all they had their haircut they're just sickening to look at honestly but i was just cool with them because they were cool i would if they say hey i say hey but like they were like he was looking at me he's deprived i'm talking deprived we're not gonna get in that we're not gonna get in that we're not gonna talk crap we're just gonna keep going um, like i said i think in the beginning you are gonna hear the phrase more often bmt doesn't get easier you just get better i guess that's true it doesn't get easier at all you get more responsibility every single week and you just learn that responsibility and you work towards you know perfecting that responsibility and everything so you get better we also took our id pics that week and my id pic was absolute trash it looked like i just got out of prison but we're not going to talk about that all right so this is what we did when we upset our mti or we needed motivation as he would say he would make us do push-ups like, he'd be like down down up down or whatever and we would have to do push-ups some people suck to push-ups i particularly did a little bit a little bit i I bust them out during my PT test though, so let's not even do it. It was either that, and by the third week of training, he would have us doing butterfly kicks. Yeah, horrible, horrible, horrible. But I loved it. It definitely motivated us, I guess you can say. It was fun. It was cute. And then we also have to do one by threes every single day, and that will be regulated by our PT monitor. And she would say, let's do some one by threes, everybody. I I loved her. I'm not even gonna cap. I really loved her for doing that. She was such a sweet person. She always had like the best personality ever. But we do one by threes, push-ups or sit-ups. Yeah, it it was horrible because you'd be just studying and you'd be into your study, and then all of a sudden you hear, "Hey, ladies, y'all ready to do some one by threes?" You don't know pain until you know that question. You don't know pain until you know that question. Also, in the second week of training, since you're out of rum, you start your classes. I hated classes, honestly. Not even gonna lie, because I was always sleepy. Always sleepy, always, always sleepy. And it really depended on the type of instructor that you had that day, if you enjoyed your class or if you fell asleep, because you're just gonna fall asleep in general because you're tired, you're in basic, you're gonna be tired all the time. You're, it really depends on the instructor that you get, if you have a good class that day or not. You get a mean instructor sometimes, you get a really, really nice instructor, or you just get a lukewarm instructor. So classes are so boring. I'm just gonna tell you that now you're gonna be super duper bored. All right, and then we'll get into the third week and fourth week of training when I get back, because we have to go somewhere but i'll be right back so yeah ignore yeah. my rainbow colored crocs okay we're gonna get into third week and fourth week of training i stopped training at fourth week so we're gonna stop there i'm gonna give you whatever i can tell you that i learned from there and then that's just gonna be it period all right so third week of training expect more responsibility because you do get your ocps and you do get your actual actual pt test you will get your actual actual pt test before your final pt test which is going to be in your fifth week of training but you do get a first pt test your initial pt test and this is going to be your actual required like you know i don't know i felt like this one had more weight you know now i got better at running because of run days run days is when you run for 24 minutes straight without stopping but you know you can stop you can you know jog they're gonna yell at you for doing that but you know you got to do this at your own pace i prefer not to stop because it's like you're basically pushing yourself to do great on your actual pt test day where you have to do a um, mile and a half run and these run days are so beneficial i did reach my goal at first i did the mile and a half in 19 minutes and then i got it down to 16 minutes that's insane and just recently i've been getting into running and i did my mile and a half in 15 minutes so it's just like the more you put into pt days which is your run days and your strength days and your cit days every all of those exercising hit days the more you put into that the more you get out of it yeah so just work your hardest and go your hardest on those days and you will see the benefit of it on your pt days like your push-ups will improve your sit-ups will improve and everything and in third week of training your mtis ease up on you a little bit um they're not as mean um they're still mean but they're not like you know always on you like they'll start making jokes with you 
they'll start you know smiling a little more they're a little bit more laid back and i really enjoyed that so let's talk about getting your ocps and blues i was like super excited about getting my ocps and my blues but i wasn't like trying to show it because i was just like you know i'm not even gonna get too excited um i don't know but i was i was happy about receiving my ocps it was so cute it was so good on me but we need to talk about the day where you go to clothing exchange to get your ocps and blues you're gonna be there all day so expect a long day mostly just waiting and walking around trying on different stuff left and right so you have to have two pairs of blues trousers and so you have to try them on get them um tailored to the way that you needed them to get tailored bring them back wait for them to come back to you and then try those on again and if they are still not right you have to get those they have to mark what's wrong and have to do da 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 and then send it back and you have to wait to get them back and you have to try them on again and then once they're good you're gonna it's just a whole lot it's just a lot of trying on stuff and you have to try on every single piece and if something doesn't fit you have to it's just a lot they were yelling at us when we were trying on our shoes it was this one guy he had no reason to yell at us honestly he was a civilian just like all of them there yeah we didn't like that and that's on period you can tell um your mtis and you can write it down in the comment um, box you go with the wingman to the comment box and you drop it in there and it will be handled as needed but yeah getting your blues and ocps is so it's such a good feeling you don't wear it that first day and then i think the next day you wear it after pt no after lunch and you just wear your regular ocps you don't wear the and you wear your sneakers with it so it looked kind of crazy i looked okay decent but it looks better when you got your boots also i'm gonna show you guys my boots i have my boots and my blue shoes okay these are my boots these are boots you're gonna be issued at basic um i have memory foam on the inside because my feet were hurting this is what they look like yeah nice little boots and then these are the blues dress blue shoes they're very much ugly okay so let's talk about when you leave that place yeah when we left we had to carry our um we have our duffel bag on our back and our backpacks on our front and we're carrying our blues service coat in our hand and you're just walking you have to walk for our for us and our squad we had to walk up the bridge through the valley down to the river this is i'm exaggerating but literally we had to walk up the bridge and do all this extra turns and you have to keep your thing in your um left hand carry everything in your left hands very i don't know the reason for that honestly but it was super duper heavy and i've never and it was so hot y'all y'all it was so heavy and so hot and i just no all right now we're going to talk about duty flight oh my god i think this is where we're having the most in third week of training so it really depends on what we're doing so before we got our ocps and our blues they'll send a group of people um to a certain duty but my duty if, along with some of the other people on my flight was to help out with clothing exchange and we were just um stuffing the duffel bag with what they need which is with the gloves and the shower shoes and all the extra stuff that we had to get when we got to basic and just stuff them in the duffel bag tie them up put them outside put stuff in certain areas put the shoes in certain areas it was like a lot we were like busy 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 like it was in a factory and we loaded them onto the truck and two other ntis were had came to pick up the duffel bags and we just loaded them on the truck da, 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 da. it was really cool actually it was a very cool day and for our lunch break we all sat outside and ate mres and it was so cute and nice and just cool to just bond with all of my flight members well some of them the ones that came other people had to stay in the dorms and they had a shakedown so i was glad i wasn't there because that's when they check your bags and everything your book bags and they open your notebooks and stuff you have a notebook in your back and they make sure you don't got no uh, no letters or nothing you're not writing in there like stuff you don't need and you will get a comment some some girl did i that would, i would have got a severe comment because i keep a lot of stuff in my bag that i'm not supposed to keep in there but and then they had the other group that had to wake up at 4 a.m to do um kitchen crew kitchen prep or whatever they call it kp duty and <laughs> yo i was glad that i was not on kitchen duty and i was glad i didn't have to stay in the dorms because i don't know what i would have did that day they had to wake up at 4 a.m and they came back at like at 8 and they were there all day and they came back sweaty with blisters on their feet and just a hot mess i felt so bad because it no kitchen duty is i guess it's no joke kitchen duty that basically when you're working in the chow hall all day like clean the tables and some people were on the dishes and stuff but when you were moving stuff and you would pass like a quarter or like a, a walk space or whatever you had to yell details and it was so 
funny. No, it had everybody laughing when we saw our flight doing that because we see other flights doing it and we will always laugh because the way they say it, it's just like, so that's duty flight. And also when you have to clean classrooms and stuff and bathrooms or latrines, yeah, that was not fun. I did do that though. I did do that once, you know. All right, and also in third week of training, since you do get your OCPs and your blues, you have to keep them neat and everything. So they're gonna have you, like, they're gonna do inspections. I think they're called open ranks. But I passed mine, I was like, eh. And it's basically when your MTI or somebody else comes to expect your clothes and I, my clothes didn't have anything on them. I made sure I picked off every unauthorized item and every string that was a little too long. Yeah, so you just gotta make sure you look at your clothes and everything, so that's what that's about. So, I did get my security drawer pulled out um, because I left it unlocked. I've left it unlocked on numerous occasions um, for so many different reasons, just because we don't have time and, you know, you're always on the rush and you need something out of your security drawers where I keep my lotions and stuff so I'm always lotioning my hands and sometimes I gotta just do it again. yeah first time I did it one of the brother flight MTIs pulled out my security drawer and he let it he let it slide that time and then this time my MTI called me and he pulled it out and he gave me a comment I was very much embarrassed um keep your security drawer locked just know that if you don't take anything keep your security drawer locked all right now moving on to fourth week of training more responsibility of course but this is also the week where you get to take your flight pictures and your pictures in your dress blues i'm going to show you guys mine really quickly and it's a really quick process you just go and they let you put on makeup oh my god hold on hold on, hold on. y'all don't understand they let you put on makeup y'all know i am a makeup fiend i love doing my makeup so just doing the simple eyebrows that i did i just did eyebrows and a little bit of mascara. I didn't do anything crazy because I only had like five minutes, I think. We had 15 minutes in total, but that 15 minutes included everybody getting their stuff out of their civilian luggage and having to go through it, having to sharpen whatever you need to sharpen, trying to find a mirror. I had to work with what I could, honestly. People were putting on foundation, I think, too, but I was like, I ain't gonna do that, no ma'am. And so once I had done, got done my makeup, I saw, uh, I had to do my edges. And so I went down the hall and we were all putting our, doing our edges in this one mirror and our MTI was just looking at us with his hands like this, like as everybody was racing around him trying to do what they needed to do. And he was just like, why are y'all all piled up on that one mirror when it's clearly another mirror right there? But this other girl was using it and we were like, since we all doing the same thing, we might as well just do it in the same mirror. And we all just laughed. It was a cute moment, you know what I'm saying? He let us do what we needed to do. He understood, period. So let me just go show you guys my pictures. All right, I have a bigger one downstairs of my, the picture of my dress blues. It look all right, you know what I'm saying? I have a bigger one downstairs, but I keep this one in my room. And then this is our flight photo. It's so cute. And then after that, a couple days go by and I got kicked out, you know? We love to see it. But anyways, that was my basic training experience. If you wanna know the process of me getting, you know, kicked out of the military, check out this video right here. But um, just to update you guys, I am doing fine. But right now I'm working on being a dental apprentice. Yeah, I'm doing those classes right now for sure. And I'm trying to, I've been trying to work my hardest for it because it's something that I want to do and it's interesting. So I'm just going to do this while I wait for my forensics thing to pick up. And you know, I've just been living life. I've just been chilling and it's been a good time. I've adjusted finally to being home. Also more videos will be coming up about BMT. It'll be a new BMT packing list. So you, cause I know what you need to pack and how to prepare for BMT. How to get yourself ready because i want to help people out and just want you guys to have the best experience possible so again thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave a like comment down below any video suggestions you guys may have and